Now that we get the the Wireshark program open, select your connection that you're using. And if you double click on it, it'll display your IP address of your computer. You cancel out of this. What's important for us is this to go to the expression portion and we're going to look specifically for IEC 61850 signals. So just scrolling down until we get to IEC 61850. You can see we have Goose and the MMS signals. So we'll highlight Goose, we'll select is present, hit OK, and don't forget to select apply. And now we can go and do a capture. So this is to, to start a capture, doing the sniffing on the on the network, and this will stop it. So let's go for a start. I'll let this run for a couple of seconds, and then what we'll do is we'll stop it, and then we'll take a, a review of what we have in front of us. So now we'll, take a, we'll stop. I'll pick a signal. And let me just slide this up a little bit so we can see what's going on. What's, in, what's, what, what's interesting to us is this subfolder Goose. And we can come down here and we can see what this information is. So in this case, we have the Goose message. This is from our feeder B that we set up. It's the analog signal. And then we can see that this is the, this is the frequency that we're monitoring that's being published out onto the network. And so let's just go through some of what some of these. So let's go through some of uh, the things that are here on this uh, on this screen. We can see that it's goose message. We can see what the reference is for the key goose control block, um, the time allowed to live for the signal. Um, this is our, our data set control block the goose ID, um, the date and time stamp when this was generated. Now the state number is something that every time a, a change occurs, so whether it's uh, um, we exceed a dead band or an analog signal changes states, uh, the state number advances by one. The sequence number indicates um, how many times that signal has been transmitted. So on our relays, uh, the retransmission rate is is three times. Actually, it's four times. So it starts with zero, one, two, and three. So if we scroll down to the next one, I'm sorry, let's do this. And I scroll down to the next one. You can see now it's the same state, state number. We've, in, we've incremented by one. Go to the next one. It'll show two. Down to the next one, three, and then it goes on to something else. So you can see the number has advanced by one, and it's, it's retransmitting the signal again. So you're going to see this repeatedly. Now the reason it's seeing we're seeing it so often here is that because my uh, the dead band for the frequency that I set was such a low value that any small fluctuations in my frequency is being published. So this is why we're seeing it so often. The simulation bit is right now set to false. So what does this mean? Are we in test mode on the UR relays? If this is set to false, we're not in test mode. If I was to turn on the test mode and uh, restart the uh, an analysis, this would be changed to true. The configuration revision is one. This is based on how many changes have occurred in the, in the Goose message. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, how many entries are there in the data set? So this is telling us this is a, it's a float and here's the, the magnitude of our device. Now, let's go in, let's set the simulation bit so we can see this change to true. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the UR relay and on relay number two, I'm going to turn on the the testing mode. We'll have to turn it on both, or else we'll get an error. 
sorry, let's close these down. We'll go into test mode and we'll switch on test mode on both. So what does test mode do? It blocks the output relays from energizing. So test mode, we've turned it to forcible. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Here we are here. It's under testing. And we'll switch this on as well. We'll make it forcible. So now if we go back to our Wireshark, let's start this again. We'll continue without saving. Let it run for a couple of seconds. And now when we go to stop this, let's go in and select uh, something similar. So this looks like it's the same. So here's our our frequency again and you can see the simulation bit is set to true. Okay, well that completes the the Wireshark exercise.